YouTube is Brian Phillips. Look at this thing. It's so cute and amazing. It's the Twin Otter by E-Flight. Amazing little creature here. This thing is equipped with the same Ultrix differential thrust and it is super, super cool. Throttle cuts off. As you can see, we've got differential thrust, which is gonna give us our yaw authority. These fixed gear are pointed straight. So just full disclosure, the yaw authority on the ground might be a little bit bad, but just check it out. I can't wait to fly it. Throttle cuts off. All the control surfaces are test, AF3X and safe, equipped. Here we go. Oh, that is so good. Those LEDs are perfect. That's 50% throttle there. That's so cute. Ultra controllable. Oh, I'm loving it, I love it. Okay, full throttle. As you can see, it's got tons of ups for a little UMX and it is on rails, hon. Absolutely on rails, guys. Oh my goodness, I didn't know what to expect, but the thing is less than 120 grams with the battery. And look how amazing it's like. It's got the world's biggest and most perfect rudder. And yet there is no rudder. I was so nervous about that. And look how amazing it is. It's killing me how quiet it is. I'll shut up. Guys, this thing is like hard to explain just how easy it is to fly. The big brother is harder to fly by quite a lot. Look at how perfect that was. I was like not even hardly seeing because the camera crew was blocking my view. <laughs> Guys, 30%, 40% throttle. It's just getting it done. And then you have enough power to just like do whatever you need to right now. Look at this, upside down. Look at just how fast I did that. Look at this, guys. Amazing. I am loving it. We have manned aircraft. I gotta get down. Do you see that manned aircraft? He's really oh. low. What is the he heck doing? is he doing so low? I think we're good at sub five feet. Yes. We'll just give him a if he's 1,700 feet, feet of clearance. We're we'll actually go below. We're gonna go negative footage <laughs> to clear the manned aircraft. It's so cute. I love how slow it is. I didn't know what to expect. I was nervous it was gonna be fast with those narrow wings. Oh. But look how amazing it is. No. And let's show the ground handling. Okay, so yeah, you gotta give it a little burst. You gotta give it a little burst. But it does, it, but it actually does. turns I mean, okay. Yeah. And then you can get off the ground like with no problem at all. I am absolutely loving it. And those LEDs are perfect. That's full throttle there. I love how well this thing is flying, guys. Oh, yes. On just the mains. I am like super impressed. I didn't know what to expect. I was thinking this thing was gonna be hard to fly. And it's just like literally doing everything. I almost got a touch and go on like a 14 foot wide angle there. Okay, let's go. S curve this, ready? All the way up, all the way back down. Cornhole. <laughs> it's so much fun. I wanna try a flat spin. Okay, let's get some altitude. Okay, man, the aircraft's way away from us now. Flat spin, can we get a flat spin? Oh, I think I can. I think I can. Oh, that's so cool. Guys, let's check safe real quick. Okay, so vertical and they're safe. Amazing. Oh, that is so much fun. Out of the throttle, we're just gonna show you how, how well this is with safe. Up elevator, roll left, roll right. Little bit of throttle going over the flagpole. With safe, let's give you a couple passes with safe just using the full control authority and just absolutely amazing. It's so easy to fly, even the camera crew could do it, but I'm not even gonna ask her because I don't want it crashed. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, I'm Wrong. safe now, I can't handle it anymore. This thing is so much fun, I had no idea that it was gonna be this good. I mean, it is a UMX, but it's like so glorious. And sometimes what we get with the UMX is just a little bit inferior flight performance to the bigger planes. But I must say, this thing is perfect for fall when it's dark out and you don't have access to the same places you'd like to fly with your bigger planes sometimes because snow's on the ground. This thing is absolutely fantastic. 
And just look how great it is. But you did really like the Ultrix, which is the same. I love base the Ultrix, but right? it was just like one of those weirdities right. that like nobody ever wanted to, you know, like it. I felt like the Delta Ray was kind of in that same echelon, right. but yet we didn't have. Okay, there's our timer. I don't know if I should respect the timer. Why don't we land? Let's okay. land it and see if we can get it at our feet here. Here we go. Okay, coming around. It's just like so easy to fly. It's really surprising. Okay. That was my worst landing yet. Yeah. And I love the way the props look. They're absolutely glorious. It is a little bit tough on ground handling because there's not a steerable nose gear. And by the way, the nose gear doesn't swivel at all. It's just locked in that position. So one complaint I have on this plane, and this is the only one, I'm putting the throttle cut on. Let's go over to the uh, telemetry. You can actually tell your voltage, but it's 3.7 volts, guys. Because it's a 1S pack, you don't have to worry about you know, your flight pack and then your actual receiver voltage because it's the same thing. So this is so nice. And yes, the landing gear do come out, but I wouldn't want to take the landing gear out. What I do want to do is I want to replace this wheel with a smaller wheel, like a tail wheel from like the, um, one of the other ultra micros. So it's about a quarter the size because I think it's going to look a lot cooler. But what an absolutely amazing little UMX and just love the way it flies. It's so easy going and so much fun. And dual brushless motors on a 1S pack is just unheard of. I'm loving it. It's just like what I said when I had the Ultrix. Yes, we have flashing lights here. We have a flashing light here. It is EPS, so it's delicate. But the thing is, look how perfect the lines are. We're gonna have the unbox immediately following this video and I hope you guys will check this out. If you wanna help support our channel, buy it from the link in the video description and don't forget to smash a like button, click the bell for notifications and obviously come back for more. Thanks for watching, E-Flight, great job. Bring back the UMXs, we love them. This thing is fantastic. I hope you guys get one. YouTube, we've got a box. Super exciting, nondescript box. I'm sure you guys already know what it is from the thumbnail, but we're gonna pretend like you don't for excitement's sake. <laughs> I know this is a small plane because the box is not very big. Oh man, they're not helping me out at all. <laughs> it's totally white. <laughs> like, it's, it's another all... one of these. It's the nondescript box. Yes. Wonderful. Super excited. Okay guys, so sometimes when we get these early samples, you get to see them about the time we get to see them which is right now. Check this out. Look at this delicious piece of pizza. Oh yeah! That is the Twin Otter UMX Ultra Micro Extreme. And we are gonna open this up. Looks like they re-taped it back down. Normally this would be taped with a big piece of some sort of masking tape in our experience. But boy, oh boy, oh boy, that looks totally sweet. Some foam, or excuse me, some plastic protecting the foam. Look at those lines, absolutely gorgeous. Huge nose wheel I'm noticing right away, which is uggo. But the mains look about right. Also noticing LEDs all over the place. Very beautiful spinners, and are they counter-rotating? Yes, they are. Counter-rotating props, amazing. And then even these cowlings or skirts along the wheels just look super fantastic. Removable landing gear. Oh, that's, you can put floats on, folks. This is floats capable. So super exciting. I was gonna say, why would you take the landing gear yeah. off? It's a fixed landing gear plane. Oh boy, man, my only complaint is that big nose gear. We're gonna have to switch that out for like a tail dragger wheel that's about half the size because otherwise the thing looks absolutely fantastic. And yes, of course, that is a small plane, folks. Yeah. Since I'm, well, I guess we kind of need to go <laughs> down here. Yep. That is small, so a super exciting. Can't wait to see this thing fly. And I do notice something just now. There is no flap but there are two servos. I don't know if they're gonna give us uh, provisions for flap rounds or not, but I'm definitely excited to see how this thing works out. Um, it is an early release. You can tell because of the nature of the box. 
It does come with framework for the floats. Okay, so I believe the floats that you'll get for this will be the same floats that you would use for the Sport Cub SUMX. And this is a bind and fly plane. So as you can see, there is, normally your manual would be under here, but I don't think we have a manual on this one. So we're just gonna kind of struggle through it, which is not a big deal. Again, early release stuff. Sometimes we get that because we're getting the product samples that the factory had. And I think I can tell because there's a number on it. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can get this thing set up without too much trouble. So we're just gonna put this in the background over here. <laughs> Those boxes are super nice though for transit. Now, I do already know this thing is gonna fly on one S and you're probably thinking to yourself, one S? Well, this is the same flight controller as the Ultrix UM UMX, which is super exciting. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the canopy. Okay, we've got a little magnetic hatch. Very big, actually. Yeah. Looks huge. And what do we have? We have a JST connection. And as you can see, it says this for their compliance information. And if you look inside there, it's mounted on the bottom. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So brushless motors and very, very strong brushless motors. And if you guys never flew the Ultrix UMX, it is something else. It's a very cool plane but it's also kind of a weird plane. And so I thought to myself, I said, at some point we're gonna get some cool things. So I just wanted to also notice something. There is no rudder, but guess what? We have a rudder because we have differential thrust on this plane. So we're gonna have full control authority for all three pitch roll and yaw axis, but then we save the weight and complexity of a moving servo for the rudder, but we have a super ultra detailed servo, servoless rudder. And you can see they use plastic here and they've got this plastic bumper, which is really smart. Okay, cool. And then of course the stall fences over here are the wing fences. And let's see what we've got. I might just pause and search through my batteries real quick. Okay, so I found my batteries and I just wanna to talk to you about charging. Okay, so this is an 800 milliamp 1S. Now these things can be found in different sizes, but it's unusual to have a JST connector, okay? Because normally on a 1S configuration, you're gonna have like a micro pH connector like this. This is what we were used to seeing. Okay, so that's a micro pH 1S connection, or I call them sometimes low C connectors, but these are actually called Molex connectors. Okay, and the reason I wanna talk about chargers is because I have run into a problem, and I think you guys probably have too if you've bought this charger. This one is a little bit cheaper. It's a six channel charger. You can charge six small batteries up to and including something like this would be no problem. But just keep in mind, 350 milliamps is the maximum you can charge on these and then 500 milliamps on these, okay, see? So just keep in mind, that's an 800 milliamp hour speed at one S or one C rather. And so this thing is capable of charging probably at two or three if you want it, but I'm gonna charge it at one. And so for that reason, I'm gonna use this charger. So again, it's a little bit unusual that we have a JST connector, but I just wanna show you two different ways to charge this. One, there's an adapter that plugs into this and it comes out with a JST end. So it goes from JST, plugs in here, and then it goes to a micro pH connector, okay? The reason I'm not a big fan of this charger is twofold. One, it uses a USB power plug, which means you have to provide a secondary power supply. And then two, you have to remember where those stupid cables are. And they're <laughs> very small. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of cables, so I can't even find it. I don't even know where it is. So this is the one I would prefer to use anyway. This is a four channel, but you can go up to much higher, much higher voltage. Uh, much higher current rather. So I'll show you how this works. So it's got all the connectors built in that you would generally need. Then you press, acknowledge the LiPo, and then you can turn this up all the way as high as 1.2 amps. So you could probably honestly charge this at full 1.2 if you want, but I'm gonna charge it at 0 0.80. Then you press and hold and it starts charging. So then it shows you the current charging status. Now, this would do the same thing, but it scrolls the information on the display. So we link to this because I just think it's a more practical solution, but this is assuming you have AC available. Yes. Okay, because it is direct AC in, this one is DC in, okay? 
So we only talk about that because if you're flying a plane like this, you're gonna to wanna to have a charger. Now that's also something I wanna bring up. That plane doesn't come with a battery or a charger. So it's like a bind and fly basic, basic, at least as far as I can tell. Because back in the day, bind and fly included a battery and a charger and everything but the transmitter. But now it's bind and fly basic, but this is like bind and fly basic advanced or something like that because it doesn't even come with a charger. So just keep that in mind. Also, some of the chargers that we used to get came with a micro pH and it was a USB style. You'd slide it in and then you would just put these straight in. For that, you would need to build an adapter. Now I'm gonna show you a second way to charge. So this is actually technically two ways to charge. But what I like to do is when I really wanna charge something quick and have a lot of basic control is I will use my charge anything cord and I will basically hook this up using something like this and then I can use my more sophisticated, nicer chargers, whether it be the S155 at 55 watts max or the S2200, which would be like 200 watts on each of these. And then you can parallel charge if you have evenly used and evenly discharged packs. And so I'll use a cable like this, plug it in, and then it says 3.7 volts over here. You can press and hold this. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna say 3S, you're gonna scroll that down to 1S, and then you're gonna go current is way less than that. You don't wanna do it that fast. But there's that, and then we'll hit start. Continue without balancing. You know why? Because it's 1S. You don't need to balance. But you have to trick this charger because it believes there's no balance lead plugged in. There isn't a balance lead to exist. So that being said, I just wanted to show you that's another way you can do that. And then I have built Numerous different applications like this, you know, different types of connectors and adapters and things like that over the years. And so just be careful because we have had a few 2 and 3S batteries that have come out in the Smart Spectrum brand that have JST connectors. This is not a 2S plane. It is a 1S plane. And you're probably thinking to yourself, that seems bizarro, but just trust me and hold your... Hold your thoughts on that until you see how intense the power is on 1S. It's like almost incredible. But also keep in mind, this is an extremely light plane. And I wanna point that out to you because if you didn't ever experience the Ultrix, you would never have thought that's a weak plane. You would have thought, how do they do that with 1S? Because it's incredible the amount of power. Now, I do have my concerns because it is still a relatively large plane, but it's very light, okay? This is like EPS, not EPO, okay? So, yes, oh, it almost fits. Thank you, camera crew, for that backup, just in case. Trying to get this thing to balance on here. I think we're gonna get it. Yep, we're on there. We're at 89 grams without the battery, and I'll just throw another battery with a piece of Velcro on it, onto the scale. We'll actually put that right on there and see if we can get that to just stay on there as well. So we're at 113 grams, 111 grams. Show them back just so they can see the wheels sitting. Mm -hmm. So that is an extremely light, really light plane. And that is twin engine, amazing. And that is an 800 milliamp hour battery. That's a big battery. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this one in as well and get that one ready to charge. Of course, you can click, scroll in the speed you want it to charge at which is somewhat tedious, but if you charge the same battery over and over again, then it's quite easy because you literally just keep putting them in. Now, that being said, I have sort of poo-pooed this charger, but just keep in mind, part of the reason I poo-pooed it is because I lost the adapters, or at least I don't know where they are. I think they exist because I keep everything, literally yes, everything. they're somewhere in our they're house. They're somewhere. Absolutely. It's just, I have no clue where. Yeah. And then the other thing too is when you deal with an odd size battery, which make no mistake, 800 milliamp 1S is an odd size, okay? 500 is not an odd size, 350 is not an odd size, 400 is not an odd size. But also if you've had any of these other branded aircraft, and I'm just gonna do Horizon a favor and not talk about them a lot, but here's the thing, you've got these Molex ends. So one thing you may wanna do as a, an RC aficionado would be to take and build yourself some sort of an adapter like this. This of course is not the correct adapter, but then you could go ahead and build your adapter and then use your off-brand Molex to JST connections. And that would give you a lot of flexibility for batteries. 
because at the end of the day, you could also make a parallel charging configuration or parallel, and you could take two of those Molex out to one and you could put two 350s together and that makes 750, or excuse me, 700. So, or two 400s and you get right up to 800. So it'd be a lot more conventional size. So that being said, if you don't buy these 800 milliamp batteries, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. But the thing is we will link to them because that's what we usually showcase the plane in is the recommended pack. Okay, so this is at 4.2 volts, so it's about done to be charged. And so probably in the event of an unbox build radio setup, what I'm gonna do is I will go ahead and get the NX8 ready to set up the radio. And what we're gonna do is we'll just go ahead and break that one out. You can press this and cancel the charge, and then you can pull it out, or you can just pull it out, but it's gonna give you a 3-3 error, which is like, stopped charging or something. I don't know mm -hmm. exactly what it stands for. And it beeps a couple times. It beeps, yep. So because we don't have a manual, we're gonna have to wing it, haha, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> so without further ado guys, you're here at Brian Phillips RC. If you wanna help support us, buy these things from the links in the video description below. We go through long format video footage so that you guys don't have to figure this stuff out by reading manuals and that sort of boring thing. And uh, sometimes we read manuals for you. Generally the camera crew does and then she tells me and then I tell you. So yeah. it's really nice. So anyway, our last amazing plane for Horizon was the F-14, which is just amazing. And she still survives to this day. But I must say, what a cool plane, but boy, that was scary to fly because it's fast and it gets hard to see. I'm thinking this thing is gonna be a lot easier to see because it's so dang small, but yeah. you can keep it close to yourself and the visibility is gonna be way better. Yeah. So super excited about that. The fit and finish on here is really nice and the LEDs have got me excited. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and get all my switch conditions back to neutral and uh, where I expect them to be. And we're gonna click back and cancel. We're gonna scroll to add new model. We're gonna create an acro. Okay, now because this is a UMX, you don't have to do that much, but we're still gonna do it. Okay, so it took forever to beep, so the camera curve paused. All right, so then model select, we've already done. Model type, we already did. Model name, so this is where we scroll in the name. Yes, that's right, 133 models, colon, space. And this is where we would type in the twin otter UMX. So I'm gonna start scrolling that in. I am using a legacy keyboard, but I'm on 3.08. Okay, so as you can see, we got twin otter, ultra micro extreme. And then the aircraft type, I don't know. I am assuming it's just a conventional tail setup, even though we don't actually have. Okay, I'm gonna check one of the standard images. I believe they have a twin otter in here. Do you remember if they have a twin otter? I, Oop. Uh, yeah, that might be the one we used closest. in the past. Oop, wait, wait. Hmm. That King Air is probably the closest. Yeah. Yeah, I thought there was a twin otter in there. Wait, is there two of those? There is, it's the same one, what yeah. the heck? That's weird. Okay, anyway, we'll pick that. And then the flight mode, I don't know if we need to really mess with that. And channel assign, I don't know if we need to mess with that. So we're gonna walk back out. Okay, so as you can see, we wanna do a throttle cut. So a throttle cut, of course, this is a prop driven plane. So it's tractoring on both sides and it's pulling the plane forward. And as you can see, the throttle cuts on because the throttle in the monitor is not working. Okay, now the throttle cuts off and you can see the throttle's working, perfect. Okay, and then we're gonna go to timer. I guess we'll set it to five minutes with a one out active. We're gonna scroll through at one minute I want voice, at 20 seconds I want nothing, at 10 seconds I want voice, at expiration I want tone and vibrate and a tone every minute thereafter. And uh, let's just go ahead and walk back out. I'm sure we have to do an assignment for safe throttle cuts on. The radio setup on a UMX is usually very simple. It just depends on the complexity of the plane obviously um, and this one doesn't have any Velcro, so I believe we'll probably, one thing I've done in the past, as you guys know, I don't like Velcro on my batteries, but I do it on small packs usually just because it's such a pain otherwise. However, in the occasions that you want to use a piece of Velcro, you can stick the Velcro down and then do a loop of tape, and then you rip that off and you can slip your battery into the sleeve, and then you can replace the battery onto the Velcroed point. I have found that that works really sharp, but it's not always necessarily the end all cure all that you want it to be because sometimes the, the batteries are allowed to slip. Okay, so black is up. Oh yeah, okay, so we're just gonna lay this down. Did it already find it? I don't know, I wasn't in bind mode. 
Whoa. Okay, so I'm gonna click and I'm gonna scroll down to bind and I'm just gonna make sure my hand is out of the way. I'm gonna go up like this and I'm gonna have my hand down here just in case. We got a red and blue. Oh yeah, that is so cool. Oh, I love the lights. Yeah, that's the lights are really cool. Really good. We have strobes here. We have nav light. We have nav light. Look how bright they are. I know they're really bright. And then forward facing landing lights. Amazing. And then of course we have the strobe on the tail light, which is amazing. I can already tell the AS3X is working, yeah. which is a little bit unusual. Oh, that's right. Because on the old tricks, the AS3X worked immediately. You didn't have to throttle it before it worked. Okay, so then just always check a differential thrust plane so it doesn't chop your fingers. Also, we're in safe. Yep. Okay, so I'm just gonna check gear and see if it's already been assigned. Yep, it has. So there's, it was safe that was on, not AS3X. Okay, so this toward my belly means safe is off. I want that to be switched, so I'm gonna click, scroll into servo, set up, go to travel, scroll over to reverse, and then I'm gonna change gear by reversing. Now that means that my normal flight mode is gonna be AS3X and then safe, okay? Now, if you wanna set up an audio event, I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. Switch A. Oops, I'm sorry, that was not the um, audio event. I wanna go down to audio events. Switch changes, add new event, highlight, and then change switch A. Okay, so on this position, I want it to say, what do I want that to say? I want that to say AS3X. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to about here and come back. So AS3X mode, and then this one says silence, so I'm gonna scroll all the way down to about here, and then we'll change it to safe. Okay, so this is gonna be safe. This is where it automatically levels your plane, okay? So now, when we walk out. Okay, so now if you wanted to display it here, you have to set up a flight mode because that's gonna occupy that spot. And then you can assign the flight mode the same audio feedback sequence, and you can also change the nomenclature that displays on the display. In my case, that helps me enough. That's good, I'm happy with that. Okay, cool. So throttle cut's currently on, so I can't actually initiate throttle, so I'm gonna just try this with throttle cut on. As you can see, it's been tested, it's been proven safe. Our timer did start. Well, that's a lot of power. Wow. And then check this out. You can definitely tell AS3X <laughs> is working. AS3X is working. Okay, so now check this out. So now I'm gonna do some taxiing. Okay, so I've got my stick full, right? Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit aggressive, uh, but then we'll go full left and then up. Yep. And then I'm just gonna show you guys this. Oh, those props look sweet. The, yeah. Oh yeah, we got enough to fly out of my hand. <laughs> yeah, it's enough to fly out of my hand like that. So super excited to see this thing fly. Elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right. Um, you know, I'm just curious if flaps will work. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna go down to servo set or system setup, disconnect RF and go down to the aircraft type. Change the wings to flap runs just for fun. Let's see what happens. Now I'm gonna go into flap system. I'm gonna set it to switch B and I'm just gonna see what happens. It does not look like it's gonna work because they're both going up. Okay, so as you can see, that's not gonna work. And I know you guys are gonna ask, so I'll show you just if we had set it up all the way. See, as you can tell, it's not gonna work, okay? So no big deal. Now I'm gonna go into system setup, disconnect RF, and I'm gonna go down to uh, aircraft type and change it from flap on to one aileron, one flap. That's the other way we can test. Now we're gonna try, we're gonna go down to flap system. We're gonna change that and see if anything changes. Ailerons work, nothing changes. So we definitely cannot do that. So no big deal, it is what it is. And so at this point, just don't plan on using flaps on this setup. Aircraft type, and I'm gonna just change that back to normal. Okay, we're gonna let everything open back up. Roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down. You can only test this with throttle cut off. A little bit of throttle, yep. And then a little bit of throttle, barely any. Throttle <laughs> cut's on. Very responsive on the throttle, yeah. by the way. 
Now, let's go through telemetry real quick. I'm gonna clear my timer. Okay, so we have the regular monitor screen, then we have a flight log. We definitely can see the receiver voltage. We can see the transmitter, or excuse me, the min max here. But just keep in mind, this is a 1S pack. So that is your pack voltage. Because it's off of one battery. So then what you can do is I wonder if I go into telemetry, if I can add anything, RPMs, empty. Actually, I'm gonna go to auto config. I thought I'd already did it, but I'm gonna try it again. Let's see if it adds anything. Nope, it didn't. But there's your voltage. I wanna see if I can go to Vario, G-Force, Turbine, GPS, receiver pack, milliamp hours. Ooh, that'd be kinda nice. Flight pack, milliamp hours. Let's see what happens. It's probably not gonna occupy that at all. Yeah, see, it doesn't actually it doesn't provide the telemetry yeah. because that telemetry data doesn't exist. Okay, so we'll just clear that and leave it empty. But just so you guys know, if you're wanting to know what the actual data is, you can see it right there, it's four volts. Okay, so now let's load the pack real quick. I'm gonna take throttle cut off. You see that, 3.7 volts. As you relax the throttle, of course it's gonna, it's gonna come right back up. Okay, pretty cool. And then if I walk over here, we don't have any RPM data anyway. So I don't know why it populates that, but that's fine with me. Okay, so throttle cuts on. The thing is pretty much ready to fly and super excited. The little twin otter looks absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait to see this thing in the air and definitely am curious to see how well it's gonna fly. I bet it's gonna fly super good, but we never know until we know. And then obviously uh, the steerable nose gear does not exist, just so you guys can see that. We only have this, we have differential thrust. Now that being said, that does simplify the model quite a bit. It takes away a couple of servos that would potentially be conflict. Um, but also one other thing you might wanna consider, and this is just something I've seen in the past, I'll show you this thing too. I'm gonna go into my servo setup and I'm actually gonna go to travel and on the ailerons, I'm gonna knock this down to like 95. You're not gonna notice a big difference in roll rate. And then I go to elevator, I'm gonna go down to like 95, okay? And I don't care about rudder because rudder is just constituting the di differential thrust. And then also I wanna set up dual rates and expo. So I'm gonna go into ailerons. I'm gonna set it to switch F. We'll do five, then 10, then 20, and we're gonna drop rates down to 90, okay? And then same thing with elevator. We'll do five. Then 10, then 20, and we'll bring the rates down to 90. And then for rudder, five, then 10, then 20. And you're like, but Brian, you don't even have a rudder. Yes, we still do have a rudder because of the differential thrust. So we'll start here. If we need more, we'll go here. If we need less, we'll go here. We get to the ground, we make that our new middle for each of the three axes of control. All right, cool. So this one is done and ready to fly right now. And it's killing me because the wind is crazy tonight. So we can't really fly it. I don't want to go out there and destroy this thing uh, because we have a little bit of time on our side on this one. So super excited to be bringing you the Ultra Micro Extreme Twin Otter. Talk about an absolute looker. And obviously, when you pair this thing up with an NX-8, you've got more than you need to get the job done. If you had the NX-6, you'd be fine. But the thing is, I would highly recommend an 8 or a 10, and that's what I'm sticking to for now. There is obviously the new iX-14, which is supposed to be phenomenal. And yes, we are still considering our options because right now we don't want to go up to the iX line and leave you guys high and dry that are still using the NX line but we've heard a lot of feedback from people that say it's very close. And so it should be manageable for us to display the information on an iX14 and then still be able to have you guys translate that into your NX6, NX8, NX10, and so on and so forth. But for the time being, we're still deciding.
<laughs> we really appreciate you guys being a part of our channel here on Brian Phillips RC. And if you wanna help pat us on the back, best thing you can do is smash the like button, watch the videos, interact with us on the comments. But if you wanna help support us financially, buy these planes, small commissions come to us from the companies that either make them, distribute them, or market them in your territory. And you buy them through our links and we will get small credit from the commissions on sales that comes from the people that are either building, distributing, or marketing them. And that happens all behind the scenes. You don't pay anything extra for it. It just happens as a pat on our back. And the best thing you can do is help us to build these relationships with all these different brands so we can continue to bring you competitive brands and tell you the full truth about each and every one of them as we run into different problems and concerns in the builds. And so we always wanna bring you fully truthful, fully detailed, and long format content so that we can get you up to speed and help get you in the air, especially if you're coming back to the hobby after years of being out. Or if you're brand new to the hobby and you really just don't know where to start, you're in the right place, you're at Brian Phillips RC, and we are here to help you, and yes, we will. We've done it for thousands and thousands of other people, and we wanna help you too. So stay tuned, so much more to come. Ask your simple questions, there are no dumb questions. Just ask them in the comments below. If I can't get to them in time, one of, maybe one of our viewers will answer your question quickly. Um, but we are having a little bit of hard time keeping up, just full disclosure. But we do appreciate you guys being here. If you wanna help support us directly through Patreon and PayPal, links are in the video description below. But we've always and firmly stand by this. The best way to support us, if you wanna support us financially, is by buying the amazing gear that we review because we have reviewed a lot of it. And every time you guys buy an airplane or a battery or a transmitter or a charger, whatever it is, it really does help to support us financially. And then you guys aren't just straight up giving us cash and we really actually prefer it that way because then you're helping us to build relationships with these different companies. So it's a win, 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 everybody wins. So anyway, that's, we only explain that because I know it's kind of like Thanksgiving time and we are really thankful to you being the most amazing audience on YouTube here at Brian Phillips RC and we have so much more content to share and so much more to come. So we hope that mother nature is nice to us this season <laughs> and we don't have to film at minus 47 degrees again because yes, that kind of sucks and it hurts bad. <laughs> but the thing is we will do it because we're diehards, diehards for you guys. So stay tuned, so much more from Brian Phillips RC. Special thanks to the camera crew and guys, thanks for being with us all these years. Come back for more.